Hello everybody, Mr. Underlay here, and today I'm going to be recommending a recommending a PC build. Um I was this is something I planned to do a very long time ago when I first started my channel. Um but never really got time to do it because I was too busy focused on making games and um so I've decided uh to give it a go. Um this the budget I've set for this is a uh, five hundred pounds. Um what is included in this is an operating system because a lot of builds I see nowadays don't include operating systems and well a lot of people want one I mean you can download them illegally but I don't want to encourage that by any means so um, this is a legitimate build uh, for £500 um, I've been using I'm going to be using a website called a PC Power Picker um, it's a site that just chooses the best websites which uh, have the cheapest deals um, to post from you can get it uh, there's an American version a UK version not too sure if there's other European uh, variants of it, um, but there might be a, a different site that uses that. Um, but anyways, I'm uh, only going to be using two particular like sites where you can buy them from. I'm going to be using eBuyer and uh, Amazon UK, just because of all the sites listed. I've um, these are the two I'd most trust um, when it comes to this, and I'd rather watch out for you guys and make sure. That if you mean if you do go follow this build, that this is gonna uh, you're gonna be completely secure when you buy it. So, anyways, let's get down with. And um, for the processor, I've uh, chosen an AMD Athlon X4 760K. Uh, this is clocked at a uh, 3.8 uh, gigahertz, and it's a quad core processor, which makes it very impressive. Um, and since it's a K model, it can uh, be overclocked to. Uh, I think it's 4.1 gigahertz or 4.2. I'm not 100% sure. Um, the performance of it's probably more equivalent to um, an AMD uh, 6800K, um, which is again in itself a very good um, processor. The only difference is this processor doesn't come with graphics integrated in it. Um, however, despite that, it won't matter to us anyways because we're going with a dedicated graphics card, which I'll say later on. Um, but its performance is very, very effective. Consider it's only fifty-nine pounds. I mean, a sixty-eight hundred K will cost you about ninety pounds, up to a hundred. So for half the price, you're getting a very good deal on it. Um, people may be wondering why I haven't I went with an Intel option. Intel for this price is probably going to be something like an Intel Pentium G three two thirty or whatever it is, because there's so many Pentium processors out there. Um, which is nowhere near in the same league when it comes to performance. I mean, a Pentium 1 is only going to be a dual core. will be cocked at about 3.2 gigahertz. It's not really going to be worth it. only thing I'd recommend Intel probably over um, an AMD in this case, and this is the case of any build, is it's a, t a TDP, that's total draw power. Um, this uses 100 watts of power, which is it's quite excessive for what it is. But even then, it's not going to matter a lot if you've got a good um, power supply to go with it. Anyway, let's move on to the motherboard. Um, I've went with um, an ASRock FM2 A88M Extreme 4 Plus Micro ATX motherboard. Um, that's a bit of a mouthful. And this is, I've went for this particular motherboard just because it's very, very future proof. I mean, people have different interpretations of future proof, but I'd regard this as future proof for several different reasons. Um, for one, it becomes with, uh, I think it's four, uh, I'll have a little quick look here, yeah, four um, DIMM slots for your um, for your RAM, um, it's supported all the way up to 2600 um, hertz for it, so that's quite, uh, that's quite impressive, I mean, most people only go with 1600 megahertz, uh, but 2600 megahertz is good to know I have at least there, especially when RAM becomes better. Um, it comes with eight SATA three ports, which I think is very, very impressive for its small price of forty four pounds forty four pence. Um, and that gives you all basically everything you need for hard drives and uh, uh, SSDs. Um, it does also come with um, onboard USB three point headers, which is um, again a little bit bonus. Not not everyone uses USB three, but in the future that will certainly change. I can imagine. And um, what makes it more interesting, I find, over anything else, 
is that it comes with a PCI 3 x16 slot and a PCI 2 x16 slot so that allows you to um, do uh, crossfire with it um, crossfire or um, the NVIDIA option which I've completely forgotten SLI that's it um, well that's a, I mean that's a, another good bonus having crossfire especially if someone wants to run two graphics cards next to each other so it gives the best performance they can really want it also comes with PCI 2.0 x1 slot and a PCI slot but not, nobody really uses PCI anymore so that's a bit that's just out there basically and for memory I went with some Patriot signature 8GB DDR3 uh, 1600 memory it's pretty standard uh, just for just 1600 megahertz which obviously that motherboard supports and it's 8 gig which is really what you're going to need it's going it's basically the standard I would recommend for gaming PCs especially is a 8 gig just to allow us to run all the games that basically you want and for storage I went with um, Western Digital Caviar Blue 1 terabyte uh, 7 7200 RPM um, uh, hard drive um, this was I found quite interesting I mean it just because at the minute I found that the uh, place which sold the cheapest one terabyte um, hard drives was actually Western Digital on uh, Amazon I think it was yeah Amazon for £38.97 I found that quite interesting because Western Digital normally the most expensive and it's a bit surprising I think this is just at, at the time of this video that just happens to be the occurrence because most of the time it, that would not be the case and Western Digital have varied because a lot of people think they're really good drives some say they don't I've never actually had one so I can't really say if I would recommend them however what I would recommend which would probably be cheaper and I can imagine a few days time if not later on today would be a Seagate Barracuda drives they're very very good and they're the drives that I have got and I recommend them highly and I've had no problems with them um, but either way that's one terabyte and that's certainly enough to get all the games like one download even not additional software it's one terabyte is plenty some people would say go with just 500 gig but nah if, if the deal's there for a terabyte you might as well take it no matter which drive it is then a uh, video card the bread and butter of the PC I went with the uh, gigabyte Radeon R9272 gigabyte of GD GDDR5 um, graphics card I think this is a very very good graphics card even though it doesn't have mantle support as far as I am aware but it still um, gives very very good support and it gives um, in terms of graphics performance more like a G between um, and old, the old AMD HD 7870 and the NVIDIA GTX 660 which makes a very very good performance there isn't unfortunately a lot of benchmarks for this card however it's so close ranked to a 7870 that you could just look at them benchmarks and use them just to see what it's like so that'll give you roughly in Battlefield 3 you'll be able to max it basically run ultra and get way over 30 FPS probably about 40 and 50 maybe even not 60 um, Battlefield 4 again you could probably run at ultra settings Metro Last Light probably at very high settings again over 30 FPS it's a very very good card for the money um, it's um, in terms of a uh, it does support a uh, crossfire obviously since it's an AMD card um, in terms of outputs it comes with a, uh, a DVI D dual link a DVI I dual link a standard display port and HDMI port so basically that means any monitor that you've got is going to be able to connect up to this PC especially uh, connect up to this graphics card even and it's a very very good graphics card this was currently going for on Amazon for £135 which is um, it's a good price I would say I'd recommend it um, in terms of the power supply I went with a Corsair CX500 watt 80 plus bronze certified semi-modular power supply um, some people may think this is a bit overkill because apparently you would be able to run this system at 430 uh, standard 430 watt uh, power supply but I kind of put this in just in case someone wanted to crossfire maybe later on or do some upgrades around the place like upgrade the graphics card from say an R9272 up to a 280X which it does allow that um, and you probably would be able to run it at 430 watts as standard this build but it, either way it's good to have a 500 watts so it's peace of mind basically 
Um, in terms of the case, now this obviously goes down to personal preference, um, but the case I really like at the minute, and a lot of people may disagree with this, is the Cool Master N200. Uh, this comes with one USB 3 and two USB 2 on the front uh, front panel. I find that um, quite effective. I mean, you can get one just to have, I mean, mine, for example, has a four USB 2 on the front, but I don't even use all four of them, so I think two is probably the right measure and having a USB 3 is good to have there. Um, it could support up to three three and a half inch drive bays and four two and a half inch drive bays, so you can slot some SSDs in this uh, in this uh, case. The bit though I've noticed with this case, and I kind of like this feature. It's that um, the bit all over the place. Really, I mean, normally you have your uh, hard drives and SSDs all fit onto like this same head uh, panel, basically on the front of the computer, and they just all slot in, but in this case it's a bit all over the place so you've got you can fit a hot one hard drive and an SSD at the top just below um, where you'd put like your optical drive um, then at the bottom you can put another SSD along with two hard drives in this little cage almost and then you can fit two more SSDs on the actual back panel which I, I've never really seen before in another case but either way it's at least you get some fit and it does make you have a little bit of a play around and especially allows cooling options pretty much customised any way you want and that's good to have in that case um, as standard it does come with one 120mm black fan at the front of the case um, however that you can fit a second one in there if you want or a radiator for your processor if you want which is also good to have it also comes as standard with a rear 120mm fan on the back panel so that's again good to have at least two fans in your computer you can also fit an, another 120 millimeter fan on your on the side panel as well as another one on the top panel so again that's very good to have and um, topical drive i just went something really, really generic i just went if i can pronounce this right it might take a while a samsung sh dash 224 db baby dvd cd writer that was a bit of a mouthful but it's just very generic, you don't really need anything fancy for an optical drive, even a Blu-ray drive I wouldn't really recommend to anybody. I mean, if you've got one, fair enough, but I wouldn't go out and buy one by any stretch of the imagination. And lastly, since I did say this uh, came with an operating system, I went with some Mi uh, Microsoft Windows 7 Home Premium uh, Service Pack 1 64-bit. Um, Windows 8 I could have went with and I was going to go with originally, but at the minute Windows 7 is cheaper surprisingly um, so I just decided to go with that and it's good to have it all in all this did come just under £500 so it's I think it's a very very good build for the price I mean you're going to be able to run any game any game you want actually at way over playable settings so it's going to be no problem at all um, so yeah if you thought there was anything I could have changed with, changed with this build or any help you want with a current build you're asking for or even if you just want to say oh I followed this build correctly and I'm really pleased with it anything like that just leave in the comments below I'm not too bored what you put I'll make sure to read it though I love reading the comments um, and uh, yeah if you like this video like this video and if you want to if you want to see more builds like this which I'll probably do I'm not sure yet probably every month I will try to do but I can't promise it I'll maybe every two months I'll just give different uh, builds. Maybe next time I might do a mini ITX build, which I've always wanted to see what it's like. So if you really want a compact gaming PC, then I'll do that for you. Anyway, I'll see you later. And hope you maybe check out any other videos that I have done, which if I need to start them again, I will at some point. Anyway, see you later.